Hello, this is Cuckoo, and I'm with uh, Electron's booth uh, today. And today they're releasing, well, they're not releasing, but announcing and showing off for the first time the Overbridge in action. And I'm here with, uh, with Jenk. How do you do? Oh, I'm great, Cuckoo. Nice to see you again, finally. Can be together in the same spot, finally. It's a good yeah, we've even wired ourselves. Look at this. This cable goes from my ears to you. <laughs> yeah. So, what have we got here? We finally, we, uh, I know a lot of customers that have bought the analog system are looking for the overbridge and waiting and waiting, and finally the wait is almost over. Where are we at right now? Well, as you say, the wait is almost over. I mean, maybe, um, well, it's looking like that in May we're gonna release the public beta, and after that, beginning of summer, around that time, we're going to release the full package, which means that 1.0 release. But before that, we need to, we would like to do a little public beta run because, as you know, there are so many computer configurations, and there's Mac, uh, PC, Ableton, and all Cubase, um, and all the other stuff. So there's a lot of complexity that we want to try out before we release the full thing. So you're gonna roll out like. Uh different features in stages and try them in the beta and then um, not, not really I mean what we're going to release at the public beta will be the VSCI plugin fully functional and also the control panel which you can see here so the both will be available for public beta there will also be a VSCI plugin for the rhythm but we are not showing that right now it needs a bit more work okay. and they will both be available for public beta in May Okay, that's great to know. So, so what can you show us today? It's the analog four and the analog keys. It's the same, right? Yeah, they 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 they've got the same VSCI plugin. Uh, yeah. So we got it hooked up here, and um, I have four tracks, and they're all being mapped on the control panel. So you can you can on this screen you can decide which tracks that you want to stream from the units into the computer on this side. On this side, you can say you can decide which tracks out from the computer back into the um, into the electron analog gear for further analog processing with your analog filters and the analog overdrive and the digital effects and then send them back into your DW4 recorder. So with the overbridge, the units become um, a sound card as well as an effects processor, but more importantly, only with a USB cable you are connected to worlds, the worlds of analog hardware gear and the world of studio DAW. Yeah, so check this out. The, everything we're gonna hear now is coming through the analog keys and the only thing that's connected to the computer is one uh, USB cable. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think that's, that's pretty cool because all you need is uh, like an analog 4 or an analog rhythm and a laptop, no sound card, nothing else. Just plug it into the computer's uh, internal sound card and you're good to go you'll be able to make really good tracks because you're giving you're getting a lot of power the analog goodness and the DAW in unlimited powers you know so let's have a look uh, what, what we've got here is this is the plugin that uh, a lot of people have been waiting for if I change tracks on the analog keys it will respond to my changes I mean that's pretty cool because it works the other, both ways so and now I could maybe try out the, this weird sound here. So let's change a filter, for example. And you can see on the screen it's changing. And one thing that I'm really fond of is these graphics here. Maybe this, this, or change it. And all these can be automated. For example, I could uh, set up a MIDI clip here and uh, draw some waveform. Let's uh, set the resolution higher than this. Just a random waveform. And that is going to track two filter. So let's have a look at track two, select track two here. And when I press play, you will see that it's responding to the waveform that I've drawn. That's pretty amazing. And, and Note that you can do this to all of the parameters. I mean, most of them as 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 the USB band with limits. 
you'll have to experiment yourself and see. And what's more interesting is you can draw a gradual change of uh, certain parameters over your composition. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be locked to a specific pattern. It could be 10 times as long as a pattern. Uh, while the pattern is playing, stuff could change. Yeah, yeah and uh, I think that's where the power of Overbridge is. is you know, as a hardware device, they've got their own limitations, but with this uh, communication with the Overbridge into the DAW world, you're going to get a lot more uh, possibilities from your units. Um, another thing that I'd like to mention is that the total recall function is, is something I cannot show you right now, but in the public beta it will be available so that you can, when I save this project here right now, all the sounds that I have here will be stored in the project and when I load it back, it will come back into the unit. So you don't have to like worry about saving your kit or your pattern, any other of that stuff. It's just that um, the project, basically the VSCI, handles all the data. There will also be a librarian, which is, um, it will allow you better uh, management of your patterns, kits, and especially sample transfers. So they will be much more efficient with the librarian that it will be out in the in the future. But when you say sample transfers, is, it applies to the rhythm, right? Yes, it's it's the rhythm in mind. Yes, it will be better in that sense. So uh, I I can see the the little live uh, project here that you got set up a few things. Uh, can you send stuff into the analog keys for processing? Um, I cannot show you that right now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's a good question because I was going to mention that. Is that we are working on a, a VSCI plugin only dedicated for audio processing. So when I when I drag and drop that VSCI and send audio into that track, that audio will go straight into the machine and you will have a dedicated interface. Wow. Currently. At NAM, I kind of show this if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yes, but we decided that we want to make this much more streamlined. So we're working on another solution that is going to come very shortly. So yeah, it will be possible, but uh, I can't show you that right now. But what I would like to show you is a sync function. Um, let's, let's switch to a track. Uh, I think it was this one. And let's turn this off. So. Now I have the, you can hear there's a pattern, let's reload the key. So all this pad, the sound is coming straight from the analog keys now. Yeah. So when I press play, the sequence starts. But I mentioned that there is sync, and this is not MIDI sync, it's actually our custom technology sync, sync handled via the USB. So I don't need to go into the uh, preferences and uh, you know mess with these settings or even the sound card. As you can see, all the audio is handled via the USB. There is no input device, and output is the internal sound card. So you can use your favorite sound cards when you're using Overbridge and Electron Gear. I think that's quite a neat feature. So now if I press play on this beat, there's a beat here, and it will kind of give you an idea how tight the sync is. So let's see and hope that it works nice. moment that he pressed play on that uh, little clip in Ableton Live, everything just synced up and started, yeah, we could probably watch the, where's the tempo, yeah, the tempo is 120, see what, let's change the tempo and see what happens, if you, if you look at this, Very, very responsive. Uh, let's, let's go, let's go crazy. But to me, it sounds like it's, it's the tempo must be divided up into subsets, very small subsets. The sync sounded really tight to me. Uh, even uh, I was quite surprised by the performance. I never tried changing the VPN on Ableton. Well, it works. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, and, and of course, when I'm, uh, as you can see that there was like, uh, it was multi-tracking, so that's tracking. So you can see that every track is being sent differently. 
What's cool is that you can actually multi-track this, uh, multi-track record it, and add effects to the individual tracks. This comes really handy when you're producing and you know recording in the studio and you want to keep it multi-tracked. That's really neat. That's really neat. Um, yeah, I'm just speechless right now. I should have like uh, tons of questions. But the first thing is, I'm really eager to see this uh, when you send audio back for processing and get the audio back into the Mac and stuff. That's going to be very, very interesting to see once it's ready. And uh, and I, my favorite feature that I'm waiting for is to use the the overdrive in, in the analog rhythm because the overdrive in the analog rhythm is really cool. I mean, the one in the keys is really cool, but it, it's it's like strictly controlled in a way. But the one is in the analog rhythm is more wild, and I I'd imagine it'd be pretty cool to use it on stuff. And it's going to be possible. I can uh, say that right now. A lot of users has been asking, oh, can I send into the rhythm because the rhythm. The physical input doesn't actually do that trick, but with the USB we actually have access into the tracks. So yes, you will be able to send audio from your DAW or even iTunes or whatever into the rhythms overdrive and filter and FX and stuff like that. So there is a lot to discover and um, good times are ahead. How about the, the analog rhythms digital effects? Yeah, of course, you will be able to send, you know, you have the send uh, for reverb and delay. It's exactly the same for the keys. And the bit crush? The bit crush that is dedicated to sample engine. Yeah, okay. But um, uh, who knows, but I, as far as I can, I know and imagine right now, I wouldn't say it will be possible. But I could be wrong, but 1%. Yeah, yeah. cool. So, um, pu public beta in May. Yep. And version 1.0 in? In the uh, beginning of summer, mid-summer, um, hopefully before the holidays. I mean, it's uh, yeah, we, we're going to see it um, when it's ready. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you can see it's working. It, it, it worked all right. It, you know, the, the parameters are responding. Uh, everything is working fine, like these changes. The, 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 the issue is that, and it's why it's still called in beta, is it's not as stable as we want it to be. We could have released this a long time ago, not so long, but some time ago, but we just want it to be really good because that's the standard that we're after. You know, it needs to be very stable, very reliable, and most of all, fun and simple to use. And in the, news, in the newsletter you just sent out, you, you mentioned like a version coming out late in, in, uh, in the winter that's going to have even more features, right? What features are we looking at then? Well, for example, you'll be able to edit the, the step sequencer. That's one of the features. The librarian is one of them. The librarian is not going to be available at the beginning. And yeah, the, those would be the, the main thing, actually. Those would be the, the main thing. And, that there's of course, and of course, I forgot to mention again, but I mentioned before, is the, the BSTI that is dedicated for analog processing. I, I cannot say for sure if that's going to be ready for the beginning of the beta testing, but it's going to be sometime in this year, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Is there any hidden uh, feature or something that you feel like you, you've forgotten to reveal? Now is the time. Well, I mean, what I really like is his graphics, so what I, <laughs> this is a personal favorite of mine, so if I go to configure and say, okay, I want to assign this, this, uh, this. You can see it. he's just touching the graphics, he's not doing any knobs. He's doing it all with his mouse this time. It's just touching the graphics and it responds really quickly. It's, it's, I feel quite strange to be filmed with a mouse. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> yeah, junk with the mouse, yeah. <laughs> Get used to it. Uh, it's, uh, there's, uh, yeah, something is happening. So I have uh, I have assigned all those controls to the you know to the Ableton section here, and now I will go to the clip editor and select let's say okay this one and go crazy. Select the next one, go like this, and repeat it until it's full for all of them. I just wanted to show that 
you know you can multi uh, you can automate a lot of parameters at once we now we're looking forward to see this yeah. animated on screen at yeah, once craziness and actually i'd like to hear the sound result <laughs> how it's going to sound yeah let's see so this is a uh, track one and uh, it was on track one let's see uh, yeah oh dear wow uh, this is techno this is techno oh. This is all great. Yeah. So, there's a lot of adventures to be had and hopefully you like what you see and it's going to be available very soon, free for Analog Keys, Rhythm and Analog 4. This is all great news, thank you so much and uh, I wish you, <laughs> wish you all the luck with the release. We all hope for a smooth uh, launch and that all the work you put into it uh, turns into a very stable product. Yeah, cool, cool, peace.